Hey, this is Diana Sosa, your favorite astronaut. And look what I have here, the beautiful Dwarf 3 and Dwarf 2 telescope. Both of them upgraded to the latest version, uh, 3.0. Dwarf 2 is doing a great job uh, with polar alignment. Stay tuned for upcoming videos in the next few days. It's a beautiful night again, and I finally got some clear nights after over two weeks of rain and clouds of having my dwarf three uh, in the box. I couldn't test it. It's been driving me crazy, but it's finally out and it's absolutely amazing. You're going to love it. So let's just go ahead and start with the uh, video and the demonstration for the uh, dwarf three telescope. Equal and it's time to start getting, um, I have Dwarf 2 on a cell phone, Dwarf 3 is on a tablet. Dwarf 2 finally polar aligned. It's a little bit tricky with the lens position. I have seen three tutorials, one with quived <laughs> the lazy geek, and he miraculously got it <laughs> immediately. He put the lenses in a way, uh, art, media, put it in a different way. As it's a little bit tricky the first time. So now I'm just going to go ahead and connect Dwarf 3. And as you can see right now on the screen, I have both telescopes, but that's not going to happen. Uh, I'm going to go with Dwarf 3, but uh, Dwarf 2 is connected to a cell phone that I have here. Once you do your polar line, you don't want to move them. You don't want to bump them. You don't want to do anything. Just be uh, let them stay in that position. Okay, connection successful. And uh, well, this, the Dwarf 3 already did the out of focus, so uh, it should save it uh, for future time. So let's see right now if it's going to tell me to do that. Okay, so right now, both telescopes are uh, roughly polar line, which means I know I have a clear view of Polaris. It's a little bit above the trees, but I can see it. And so that's kind of like where the telescopes are facing right now, as you can see on the uh, other uh, camera here. Um, I'm not measuring any signal level. I know I am at latitude 35 in this case because I know where Polaris is. I kind of like look over the uh, telescope pointing there, and that should be about it. Um, let me go here into functions. And immediately, let's try EQ, EQ mode. And it's going to ask me about the uh, if it's uh, in focus. And it is. It should be. So I'm going to say done already. Uh, prepare the necessary tools in advance. So yes, the telescope, a tripod, and a compass tool. I don't need a compass tool as I know exactly where Polaris is. It's always in, it's always in the same place. It never changes. So, uh, yep, that is uh, all my latitude. The confusing part for me was uh, when it, regarding the lenses. Um, as I mentioned before, I watched one of the tutorials, and from what I saw on the video, it looked to me like he had the lenses pointing to the south, which is the front of the telescope, but obviously, um, the lenses need to go pointing the star Polaris. It needs to find them to do the three-point polar alignment. And what it's trying to do is the three-point uh, polar align. First, rotate the, the tripod clock, clockwise by about four degrees. So <laughs> facing the telescope this way. So the dwarf device faces uh, true north. Yeah, okay, I can see that. I see Polaris here. And tilt angle down. 
okay, down, which we're seeing it this other way because everything is the other way. It's, it's a mirror image kind of like, and I have all the lights and everything here, so that's always challenging for any telescope. Okay, let's continue. And it took several attempts for the Dwarf 2. It's possible that it still needs to go more towards the right if I'm facing the telescope. Let's see. Ah, this is unbelievable. Perfect alignment achieved. Okay. Deviation is at four degrees. You may proceed with your shooting. I avoid moving the tripod, what I said the unit or the lens cylinder until the session ends to prevent readjustment. So we're not going to touch it. Got it. Just go here to the atlas and let's just go ahead and find Andromeda here. Okay, um, let's see what happens. If not, then I'll change to the uh, Pac Man Nebula. Uh, now it's going to calibrate, which mm, I, I'm a little confused, but um, maybe this is the right steps. Um, I like to have my the telescopes, if I hear, you know, in the house, around the house, I prefer to have them power on it. After 30, 20 percent low in the batteries, they don't function well. So I'm not sure if it's on the tree. decided to start again this imaging session as now I can see that Andromeda is not uh, properly framed in the middle of the screen. So I am going to go back here, hopefully to the Atlas. Let's see. And current session. Yes, let's just end and let me go back to see if we can frame it better. Um, it was a lot of trees on the way, so I am giving it the benefit of the doubt here. Okay, do you want to stop and switch to tracking M31? Yes, we're going to do that. Now, you know, it is on the equatorial mode right now, so I'm not moving the telescope really or doing anything else. Um, I'm not putting it back into the home position. But these are the real tests. This is why it's so important to do these uh, sessions to find out little things like this. Ah, there you go. Good job, Dwarf 3. Oh, my God. <laughs> OK, so now it is definitely in the middle. And I believe it's because of all those trees that were right there. Uh, let me just go ahead and change the uh, shutter speed to 60. And I am going to do uh, gain 60, which is Good. Um, let's just give it a few seconds and see what happens. Presets here that I want to use this one, which is the 60, 60, 4K, 60 gain, 60 uh, shutter speed. OK, so now let's check uh, fits. Stack 4K, AI enhanced, so all that is good. And Astro Filter, that's the one that I like. Now let's just go ahead and start the imaging session again, properly frame in the middle. The stars look good, they are in focus. And now we should be able to see very good Andromeda as it already passed those trees. So definitely that's what happened.
No wonder my videos are long. They're long, but they're funny and they're entertaining. And you must watch everything because I always have little tips and little tricks here and there. I'm waiting. That's when I call the aliens. <laughs> Ooh, no, 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 no. So it's not properly. But you see, that is a problem with uh, the alignment. And if that's the case, I'll end this session and start it all over again. <laughs> okay, just to clarify this. So it is tracking right now, and it is correct. So the only thing I can think is that it's too much uh, for the 60 seconds, which <laughs> is hard for me to believe, but I it's all I can think. So we're going to find out real quick. Well, this is good that it's happening. But I am going to try this again. Let me be sure here that the filter and everything is right. Calibration is there. I mean, right now we can see the stars around it. So that it's tracking properly. So it's not that. Okay, so I'm going to start this session again. Come on. And if it doesn't work, then I'm going to lower the shutter speed to 30. <laughs> okay, so what happened? I don't know, but that is beautiful. Oh, my God. Thank God. It's 10 p.m. Oh, my God. Dwarf 3, I have to work tomorrow. I have a lot to do. It's not like I can be here until 3 a.m. Okay. Finally, we got it. So it's not that what happened? I don't know. I think it's the aliens. The aliens. What else? Who else is going to do this? Okay. Well, let's see. Um, we're just at only 28 minutes, and this is looking really good. Um, I don't see... Uh, block artifacts right now. I'm sure there's going to be something, but my goodness, uh, <laughs> the uh, Andromeda Galaxy is looking great, and I stick to my what I wanted, which is 60 seconds and uh, uh, and 60 gain. Now I would like to do a little bit higher on the gain, but you know, uh, the Andromeda Galaxy is such a bright object, and we. It tends to be the core of the galaxy overexposed, but I know how to fix that and fix inside. So if you have been following my tutorials for fix inside, you'll know how I fix that. That is very simple. Um, and if you haven't, you need to start looking at watching some of my short videos of editing. Dwarf 2, also doing equatorial mode, and this one is showing a little bit more black artifact and i believe it's much less than what it was before uh it's a 425 images stacked and not much um on the bottom of the image the stack image uh, black artifacts but that's okay it happens to all telescope but it's much better this is great news that we have now dwarf 2 also with equatorial mode Okay, so this will be the last follow-up of this of tonight's test. As I think we're going to be able to determine and see the few things that I have been testing. And let's see. Right now, um, it has done seventy-five images, so that's seventy-five minutes and stack sixty-eight. And I'm just going to wait until it finishes uh, a little bit more on the stacked image, and. But is this looking pretty good? Uh, <laughs> I mean, that is absolutely beautiful. I see already uh, differences here on um, the stars are a little bit more rounded. And probably that has improved with the AI enhancements, but also with uh, the uh, polar alignment.
the back part of the telescope pointing to the north, let's say that Polaris is right there, then you need to find your latitude. In my case, it's 35, but I know Polaris is right here. So I have a clear view of it. Um, you can do this. Uh, uh, the angle of the telescope has to be approximately the, your latitude. So in my case, it's 35 degrees, but sometimes in the middle of the night, those things are difficult. Uh, you can use an app that has a level and put it right here, okay, and find that 35 degrees angle or your latitude. In my case, it's 35. But another way to do it, if you have a clear view of Polaris, let's say it's right here, and I look like this, and I am seeing Polaris, I am going to then, which is what I did last night, move the telescope up or down, see pointing or aligning with Polaris the best you can. And that is the only time that I have uh, that it says perfect alignment. And it's never going to be a perfect, perfect alignment unless you use a program like SharkApp or other programs. Um, uh, but that's kind of like the closest way I was able to do it. Once you have the polar alignment, remember, you cannot be moving the telescope anymore, which is another important part of this video that I have to change targets uh, twice. First, I was going for the Pac-Man Nebula, but it's right here on the trees. So it found Pac-Man Nebula, but the trees are on the way. So I didn't touch the telescope anymore. I went back, ended that my imaging session, and went back to the Atlas and looked for Andromeda, and then got Andromeda again without touching the telescope because it is already polar aligned and that is the first step you have to do if you're going to polar align the telescope and then it's the rest finding the target calibration and everything